Coming up on this week's programme. Facing her fears, we follow an anxious traveller as she heads abroad for the first time in almost two years. It was that first view of the sea and I was like, I can do this, I made it, I made it. This is gonna be okay, this is gonna be good. We've got tech that's designed to take the stress out of your overseas adventures. I've rounded up a bunch of gadgets that will be sure to guide you to a state of zen. We find out what Bangkok's taxi drivers did when their customers disappeared. And we meet the people helping passengers with their paperwork. We're here to reassure them, to guide them and make sure that they have everything to hand. Hi, it's London, it's January, and the weather's, uh, shall we say, cold. Uh, so what many of us desperately want is some much needed sunshine. But I think it's fair to say that traveling right now is more than a little complicated with a seemingly never ending list of rules and regulations. So if you're someone who battles from anxiety at the best of times, can you really contemplate a trip overseas? Well, we've been to meet someone who's done exactly that. In 2012, Kimberly Davis suffered a life-threatening infection following a routine operation. I ended up spending several months in the hospital, needing a major surgery, um, and being, what I was told later on, just hours away from death. Um, and that changes you as a person. That changes you. And there's a lot of anxiety that comes with life now that used to never be there before. So when COVID arrived in the UK, news of another invisible and deadly threat had a significant impact on her. When the pandemic first started, uh, like many people, I was very nervous and I hunkered down in my flat. Um, and that went fine for a while, but after <laughs> about a year, the solitude started taking its toll and I started finding that my mental health started going down and down and down. And I found myself starting to cry a lot more and um, really feeling that I needed to get out. But at the same time, I was really nervous about going and taking that leap. Dr. Nihara Kraus is a consultant clinical psychologist who has seen mental health issues increase dramatically since the start of the pandemic. With the pandemic, we've had to face an invisible threat. And one of the things that happens with that is that our sense of safety, which is a basic human need, is threatened. Luckily for Kimberly, help was at hand. Seeing how her mental health was deteriorating, a concerned close friend offered to take her on a holiday to France. After initially pushing back, Kimberly finally gave in and agreed to go. So I have literally gone from being in my house for almost two years to getting on a plane and going to France. I'm very nervous and I've had a lot of panic attacks this week about it, but um, it's just gotten to a point if I stay in the, in the flat, I'm, I'm not going to be okay. We'll see. Wish me luck. Bye. When people are anxious, they tend to avoid the thing they're anxious of. And a very effective form of treatment is to try and learn to face your fear, bit by bit, one step at a time. For Kim, just the journey alone was a huge step forward. Getting on the plane, getting to France was a nightmare for me. It was so stressful. It was so, so stressful. And I thought at many points along the journey, I can't do this. It was that first view of the sea. And I was like, I can do this. I made it, I made it. This is gonna be okay. This is gonna be good. It's gorgeous and uh, I'm very excited to be going in through the water. As you can see, I'm the only person here wearing a mask. Just in here I go, into the water, yay! How good does that feel to feel the sand beneath my feet and the, oh, the sea on my feet? Oh, it's just the best. This is amazing. Oh my God, it's so amazing. I've got a great spot here, right in front of the water. 
There's my toes wiggling. I'm trying to stay away from people. Okay, that's freaking me out. Don't get so close. I started feeling all that fear and anxiety kind of rushing back. There's just too many people here now, and there's too many children, and nobody's wearing a mask, and I'm getting panicky, so I can't seem to find a place on the beach um, that's far enough away from people, so I'm, go I'm going. This location and this view has made a huge difference uh, already. By day three, I started feeling brave enough to go out on some little adventures. It was so great to do the little things, the little things you don't even probably think twice about normally on a holiday. Gelato by the sea. I mean, come on, you can't beat this. I went on a bus tour and got to see the sights. Just had the most glorious facial, massage, hair treatment, and I feel amazing. I wound up doing three hours <laughs> in the spa. I needed it. I started going to restaurants again. This is the best pasta I have ever eaten in my entire life. And I don't know if that's because I haven't been out of my house in so long, or if this really is just the best pasta I've ever eaten in my life, but oh my God. coming back here every day. I'm used to all the smells and sensations of being in my flat for almost two years. So when I traveled out for the first time, I started noticing that all of my senses were completely heightened. Just the most tiny things like touching a rock or uh, smelling a flower, or smelling perfumes. I've been shopping for fragrances. Everything was the best. Every single thing that I had was the best. Look at that stunning, stunning sunset. It is outrageous. I had this moment where I walked out of the hotel room and I sat there walking towards the elevator and thinking, something's missing. Something's, I forgot something. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? And then I realized I had forgotten my mask. And initially, I went running back, panicking. Oh no, I forgot my mask. Oh my God, I'm in the hallway without my mask. What am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? But then I had this moment once I got back in the room where I went, I forgot my mask. That means I forgot to be anxious for a moment. And that must be some sort of sign that there's been progress. And that was really exciting and wonderful to experience. There's nobody around here. Actually, actually, I can take my mask off. Oh my god, it's unheard of. <laughs> it feels weird. <laughs> I don't actually want to go back. But it's been really nice to, to, to have all these experiences and to remember what it's like to, to live. It's nice to be able to breathe fresh air, look at the sunrise, look at the sunset. I haven't seen these things in two years. So it's been really miraculous to be able to re-experience them again. And I have forgotten how much I missed them. So uh, this is the end for me here, but the, the new beginning of something else. And I'm looking forward to restarting again in London. The holiday was really rejuvenating. It was life-changing. It was critical for my mental health. I'm starting to slowly reincorporate myself into life that I was missing so much. I missed everybody. So I think that this trip has really um, saved me. I know that there's a lot of people out there who, like me, have a lot of anxiety or really nervous about going out. Do whatever you can to take a baby step where you feel comfortable, but you push your boundaries just the tiniest little bit because the payoff, the reward, um, is really gonna ultimately be worth it and it's gonna save you. Believe me, if I can do it, absolutely anybody can do it. So if you're watching at home, please go out of your house, I beg you.
it's fair to say travelling anywhere right now can be fairly stressful and not the best start or end to your holidays. Increasingly, many people are exploring alternative modes to flying, such as by train and by car. So less paperwork, queues and delays, but chances are it's a much longer journey. So no matter how you like to get around, things just aren't that simple. So I've rounded up a bunch of gadgets that will be sure to guide you to a state of zen. OK, so the first gadget doesn't even require you to get up from the bed. <sighs> I definitely needed this. It's the Vive Flow, billed as immersive VR glasses for on-the-go wellness. Fair warning, it comes with a bit of a price tag. They look like a pair of futuristic, sci-fi inspired goggles and that's what I quite like about them. So you can use your Android phone to navigate your way around and also access all the applications available. It is pretty relaxing, I must say. So these things are clearly designed to be used on the go. Now I've got to admit, I'm not massively into meditation, but I can really see how they can put you into a nice state of relaxation. I love that they're super portable as well, so they'll take up only a bit of your bag rather than all of it. So all in all, a brilliant travel companion. Next up, and not quite as dear, is the Muse S, a brain sensing headband to help you meditate and improve your sleep. The sensors include EEG to monitor brain activity, PPG for heart rate monitoring, and pulse oximetry for blood oxygen saturation. The app helps you position it correctly. All the colors filled means the sensors are in the correct place. The soundscape goes louder if your mind starts to wonder, so the quieter it is, the better you're doing. It's a bit of a faff to set up, a little bit tricky, and I feel that by the time you get this thing to work, you will need some guided meditation. But once you finish the session, you get your own calm report. And uh, I'm happy to say that I achieved one second. <laughs> now for something to tackle your weary body. I've got my hands on the Theragun Mini. It's a portable massage device that uses percussive movements with three levels of intensity. Okay, so it's got a dedicated app. What gadget these days doesn't? And it's got options for travel. So we've got jet lag and travel. So I'm going to tap the travel option. So it's going to guide me through a four minute whole body routine. I'm going to ease myself in. So it's telling me to sweep back and forth on my right shin. Ooh. It's quite quiet. I'm going to turn it up to the highest setting <laughs> and see how it feels. Wow, that is vibrating my bones. <laughs> so the great thing about this is it's nice and portable, you can easily chuck it into your hand luggage or your handbag. It's pretty quiet. So if you are using it in public, you know, you can relax without annoying people around you. Um, it lasts for about 150 minutes on a single charge. That's more than enough time to be used over the duration of a holiday. Now, if I was going to use something like this, I'd probably use it just before a flight, maybe relax my muscles a little bit, or perhaps more importantly, after a flight when I'm feeling a bit tense, or if I need a boost of energy and just want to be woken up, this thing will pummel my muscles and bring me back to life. Last but not least, I have Boira's MG280 Yoga and Stretch Mat. It comes with four preset programs and three intensity levels. Air chambers in the mat inflate and mold your body into yoga stretches. I need that stretch. <laughs> So I'm gonna go for relax, and I think a little bit of heat too. Stretch those muscles. Okay, so it's currently putting me into a twist position, and I definitely feel like I'm being twisted. So this isn't your traditional yoga mat, and it is quite bulky, so it isn't going to fit into your standard suitcase, and you definitely can't roll this thing out in the middle of an airport lounge. But, you know, after you've been on a long flight, you're feeling crooked, you know you've got to quarantine for 10 days, no access to massages or any kind of spa treatments whatsoever, you can just come to your room, roll this out, and get that stretching yoga experience inside your room. Now, London's the Eurostar terminal is usually one of Europe's busiest railway hubs. That was until COVID struck. But now, as passengers slowly return, they need more than just a ticket and passport to board the trains to France or Belgium. So we went to meet the team who are helping to take at least some of the stress out of that journey. 
Myself and the team are here to help these customers every step of the way. Hello, madam, you okay? Are you together? Okay. Before, we used to have customers that were prepared and excited, but now it seems like customers very nervous and anxious about traveling. Thank you. Have a lovely trip, madam. Pleasure. We are here at the station making sure that we're giving them clear information about what to expect for the next step of their journey. So, is it, is it working? We do have issues with customers arriving with not Android phone, for example. So when they do have this kind of Nokia small phone, they won't be able to use the QR code. And we've been really like flexible to use our own device. We're here to reassure them, to guide them, and make sure that they have everything to hand. You've got it. That's fine. I'm going to make it. OK, just have your ticket for me, please. It's a different way of traveling now. It's not about anymore like I just need my passport and my ticket to travel. It's more, do I have the right document? Do, uh, have I done the right COVID test? Hello, how are you? I'm all right. You good? You're welcome. You take care. <laughs> no worries. Bye-bye. Everyone is on board. We managed even to have uh, people who were struggling. So we had the last minute, few of them jumping on board and trying living on time. So this is, uh, this is fantastic. Things change every single day. One day they may seem prepared, but then the next day the rules have changed. And that's because the the changing in requirements, the document. Creating that trust between them and us, and it's really important. It's really important. That, that's the key here. Well, to finish things off this week, we are off to Thailand, where travel was slowly beginning to open up again, which was mainly thanks to tourists being granted quarantine-free access via the newly launched Thailand Pass. But the spread of Omicron meant that got suspended, crushing the hopes of many of the people working there in tourism. Amongst them, Bangkok taxi drivers. But one company has found a novel way to support its staff. This is how Bangkok used to be bustling with tourists and taxis, taking them to where they need to go. The year before COVID hit, the Thai capital welcomed 22.8 million tourists, making it the most visited city in 2019. Now, there are taxi graveyards like this all over the city. Though this one has been put to good use. การปลูกผักมลังคาแท็กซี่มันเป็นไอเดียของทางสถานการณ์ทางการโดยตรงครับเขาผู้ผู้บริหารอะไรเขาคงคิดอย่างนั้นของไม่รู้อ่าผมใน
ปไปสถานที่คือเข้าสารรถตรงที่ผมเคยจอดรอผู้โดยสารต่างชาติที่เขามาเที่ยวเมืองไทยเราเนี่ยตรงนั้นนะกับทุกวันนี้มันจะแตกต่างกันแค่ไหนเดี๋ยวไปดูกันครับมันมันแย่ดูด้วยครับโล่งไปหมดเลยทางท่านหาเดินไม่มีปกติเดินกันเต็มไปหมดครับอันนี้โควิดบางทีจอดเป็นสองชั่วโมงชั่วโมงกว่าสองชั่วโมงแต่ก่อนนี้สิบนาทีห้านาทีบักเก็ตเบสชานส์บอสอินสเปกส์เนเบอร์ริงแลนด์ทูเอ็กซ์แพนด์เดอะแท็กซี่ฟาร์มนะครับยังไม่กลับมาเยอะรถยังจอดอยู่เป็นพันพันคันถ้าเกิดรถยังไม่เคลื่อนไหวคนขับยังไม่มาโครงการก็มีคุยกันว่าถ้ายังไม่เคลื่อนไหว Currently everything grown is consumed by the drivers though it's open to passersby to take a look They want to open a coffee shop and a place to sell the extra produce. Now the other drivers have become his friends and family, and they will often share a meal together of chili paste and vegetables picked from the rooftop. Well, I do hope things pick up really soon for those taxi drivers in Bangkok. Right, so that's all for this week. Coming up next week. We're in the Austrian ski resort of Ischgl, ground zero for those first Alpine COVID cases almost two years ago, as the slopes reopen again. Don't forget, you can catch up with more of our recent trips on BBC iPlayer. We're on social media too. Just search for BBC Travel Show on Facebook and Instagram. But for now, from me and the rest of the team here in London, it's goodbye. <laughs>